Welcome to the Pain Points Podcast. We tell the stories of small businesses, the people that run them, and the journey they are on. Our purpose is to gather a new perspective on starting, growing, maturing, and maintaining businesses of all sizes. So grab that cup of coffee, sit back, and join us as we start the conversation. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode. I'm your host, Sarah Harbuck, and with me is Kristen Ellis and Megan Harbuck today. Hi. Hi guys. And our very <laughs> special guest is Laura Weissman. Hello, Laura. Hi, how are you? We're good. How are you doing today? Good. Good, good. Well, I just want to say thanks to everybody who has a message. I wasn't here last week. I had to have emergency surgery on my eye. Everything's mm-hmm. good. We're all good. But I appreciate everybody um, checking in and saying hello and hope you feel better. So anyway, um, I just wanted to say that real quick before we got <laughs> into the episode. Um, so Laura, why don't you have like tell everybody what uh, a little bit about yourself that, you know, that those who don't know who you are, you know, could get to know you a little bit. Um, so I started off actually as like a travel blogger back in 2008. I still have my travel blog. Um, but as of recently, I got the chance to be on with Gary V when he was doing tea with Gary V in the beginning of the pandemic. Mm -hmm. Um, so that, so that kind of boosted me a little bit and kind of put me on the map because I've been writing for the last 12 years. Um, he kind of shouted me out about not doing video content so uh <laughs> that was not what i expected on that call but then i've been doing it since and it's been great and the opportunities have been awesome so but i speak about my anxiety and being vulnerable and mental health and i speak about it in a very real authentic way um which i think a lot of people are afraid to speak of um yes yeah and so and i wrote books about it I have one for uh, teens with struggling with anxiety. And then my first one is about my own journey with anxiety and traveling. Nice. I would imagine traveling is an anxiety inducing thing it anyway. Is. And that, then I mean, it have... is for me. I know. <laughs> yeah. So when you, are, when you already suffer from, you know, having anxiety just in everyday life, how does one go about traveling when they have a, like a high anxious personality? See, it, you know, usually the first day of, my travel like usually day one i'm very anxious and like usually like not comfortable but i think that's normal because you're in a completely different state country wherever you are right yeah but for some weird reason um the anxiety like it it fuels me like it's a good thing like it doesn't affect me that much when i'm traveling like i it's almost like a rush more or less yeah yeah but um i just enjoy I don't know what it is like and that's what I've noticed when I was traveling that I was like why can't I be like that at home when I was younger right. I was like how do I bring that back home but is I it, think it I think it's just a think confident it's thing being in like a different like atmosphere so like sometimes when I travel I do get a little like <gasps> you know the planning yeah. and all the things but then once I get there and I start doing stuff it's like it's almost like because I've transported from my normal environment there's some sort of like almost you know emboldened sort of well i'm gonna do this and i'm gonna oh, try yeah. that You're in a new place and nobody knows you yeah and yeah so you do you can, think that maybe is I, who you yeah because I, t- I talk about that a lot where i feel like it's a complete clean slate you're a stranger nobody knows who you are so it's like you can be whoever you want because you're yeah. just in a new place so it's it's almost empowering to i guess you could say yeah yeah to some that's, degree it's awesome and it, it's also really cool that you're you're using that anxiety as fuel, like you're, you're interpreting it, you know, it's, it's all about perception, right? Mm-hmm. And so instead of folding in on yourself and, and allowing it to like, you know, go hide in your hotel room or something, <laughs> you're, you're using that as fuel. And I think that's a really uh, cool thing for, yeah. you know, that a lot of different people could probably use that as, as motivation and inspiration to, you know, not let it overtake them, but to use it as, as, as inspiration. So that's really cool. I, that's, a really that's a really neat outlook yeah on you know on that so. what what had you start what made you start travel blogging I mean did you have an interest in traveling and then just decided I'm gonna document every trip I take or um well when I was in high school um I think it's still avail still a thing hopefully but it's called people to people it's like a educational program um and I think I don't 
they might have changed their rules, but at the time you had to be nominated to do it. Like a teacher had to nominate you to go. Okay. Um, and so I got nominated to go on like a 20 day trip to like six different countries. Wow. Um, wow. And it was like, at the time my dad was like, cause I was in high school. He's like, do you want a, a cause I was like learning to drive. He's like, do you want a new car or do you want this trip? I was like, oh, fuck the wow. car. and I was like, fuck the car. I, I want the trip. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that kind of really opened me up to like, it changed who I was 100%. Can I know? ask, can I ask what country the, the, that you went to? The uh, it was country? mostly Europe. So I went to, uh, England, France, Germany, Netherlands, Belgium, Switzerland. Yeah. That's six. Yeah. Wow. Awesome. Yeah. I love that's it. Cool. Yeah. So that's what prompted the kind of the traveling in your life, this trip yeah, in high school. Yeah, and then because I was coming home and I had so many crazy stories and awesome stories, like my friends and family were like, that's so cool. And I was like getting like good feedback. So I was, they were like, maybe you should write about it. Yeah. So then blogging at the time back in 2008 was at its high. Like that was like yeah, the most popular right. thing. So I jumped right in, in the travel blogging community and you know, it was fun. It was such a fun time. I mean, travel blogging is not what it is today, but it was, it was just a fun time back then. Good. Yeah. Yeah. So, and then did you like parlay that into some sort of a money income revenue? Obviously, if you, if you're writing about things, do you have people that, you know, advertisers going, Hey, you're, you're writing about these places and we want to sponsor you. Or how do you, how do you generate your revenue when it comes to something like that? You know, never, obviously you have your book sales, but yeah, I mean, I, ne I never figured it out. So, <laughs> <laughs> I tried my hardest. Like I had, um, I did do advertising back then. And I mean, I was getting like 20 bucks here and there, but it really wasn't about the money. Like I just enjoyed sharing stories. And then, you know, I saw people who are still doing it today, who I remember from back then mm -hmm. and they're they're now they were moving and then it was like slowly moving into like courses which wasn't really for me i just it's just not me and i was like i don't want to like sell courses on how to make courses do you know what i mean yeah. like i just yeah. it, wasn't, right. my it yeah. wasn't my thing i was like where's the writing like i was enjoying the stories and the adventures and so eventually like travel blogging kind of like changed for me but um yeah it, it was difficult but you know there was moments where i try i thought of like oh let me go teach abroad or something which i i'm certified but never did it either <laughs> so, uh, but if, you, if you're certified you still have that option if you should yeah, yeah. if you mm -hmm. want to do that in the future yeah yeah so looking at your linkedin it looks like you have a bachelor's degree in forensic psychology with a minor in law yeah how does it does that in any way shape or form does that mesh with the travel writing? Does that mesh with the writing in general? Like, because I mean, in Penny Panic, you, you talk a lot about anxiety and other things like that. And I'm just curious, did that degree help you in that way? Um, well, I mean, there's a the forensic psych and law. There's a lot of writing. So, yeah, um, right. That. Yeah. So I was writing a lot in college. Um, I did learn a lot about psychology in general, but it's it's the forensic side. So it's more, it's murder cases. So I was pretty much studying all serial killers, murders oh. <laughs> for like four years. So it's, it's interesting. So you're learning more about the abnormal psychology of it. Okay. Right. Okay. Yeah. So not yeah. necessarily the everyday. Yeah. I mean, there is, but then it, you, we dive more into like the abnormal side, right. but, right. Mm -hmm. um, but then I realized, you know, back when I was like in my senior year, you know, they, you're young and they don't tell you half the information. So you think like, oh, I can't wait to be in this field. And then they're like, yeah, no, you need a doctorate to be that. And I was like, yeah, absolutely not. <laughs> uh, I was like, um, is somebody going to pay for that? Cause I'm not. Right. And then, and then like, there was an option to go to law school. Like I had a law professor who was like, you really should go to law school. Like you're really good at what in, the, in my class you aced it. I'm like, are you paying? Cause I, <laughs> so, I mean, it was just like, oh. then I really had to think of like what I wanted to do. And unfortunately forensic psychology, unless you have a higher degree, you're not going to mm. do much with it. Right. So yeah. you wind up just going into social work and I worked in mental health for a little bit and uh, for a few years and I got burnt out very quick. Yeah. Uh, it was just very tough work. 
Yeah, it for is, sure. It is very I hear tough you. Work. Yeah. Was traveling uh, sort of like a solace for you then during those those years you were working in mental health? Yeah, I mean, well, so I was going through from in my first book, I was dealing with like my brother who was really struggling with mental health. So and it was very traumatic in those years. So when I was traveling was during that time. Okay. So so then my anxiety was at its highest at that time. So traveling was kind of like an escapism type thing where I was like, I just need to get out, you know? Right. Um, but a lot of my, like my, my book, and then even the second one, it's like, it's my own experience with it. And then mm-hmm. later on, because of Penny Panic, I worked in mental health. So I, there's a professional side that I understand what it's like to be on the other side. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So I, yeah. I understand both perspectives, you know? Yeah. I hear you. You know, I, a lot of uh, travel bloggers, uh, at least especially the ones I know, are more more about, you know, hey, here's how you snag these great deals and how you travel on a low budget or how you can get to these really cool exclusive places for less money. And it, it you know, in looking at your stuff, you you've approached it in a completely different way. It's more of like a, a spiritual and mental yeah. well being sort of situation mm-hmm. with your writing. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I, I like that other sort of side to it because. Well, yes, we've got to, you know, if we want to travel, being able to afford to do so is helpful. (laughs) Absolutely. (laughs) But then then what do you do to refuel your soul while you're there? Because so many times people go on vacation, I hear them say, oh, I need a vacation from the vacation. You know, so what are your thoughts on something like that? Um, I don't, I don't, because traveling is, is very, it is very spiritual for me because it's like, I don't like doing tourist things so i i want to blend into the culture i want to like i want to go to the local grocery stores or the fruit stands where they go and i want to do everything like a local yeah and i feel like you get a more authentic experience and you know i the last place i went to i think now is two years ago was cuba and then you know that was the first time like I went international like with my husband and it was like a very interesting trip and I just was like you know the one moment where we did something touristy it was horrible and I told him that I was like this is gonna suck I'm telling you right now and he's like no it's not (laughs) and I was like this is gonna I'm calling it right now and he was like that was like the worst food we've ever had and we I was like I told you yeah sometimes it's just like I don't know I think keeping it simple is always yeah, best wherever yeah. you go. I, I really appreciate your perspective because when I was 17, I went on a trip to Japan with two mm-hmm. of my best friends. And nobody really tells you how, I'm about to use a word and I'm not sure if it's the right one, but how traumatic traveling can be. Oh, it is. It's, a, it's, it's overwhelming. Yeah. It's very overwhelming. And for me, you know, going to Japan at that point had been like a 10 year dream of mine. It had oh. been, a, a mom can contest to that. Oh, yeah. But I honestly came back from that trip extremely depressed. Yeah. Um, because Those travel blues. Yeah. Yes, yeah. travel <laughs> blues. And it, I mean, it was a beautiful trip and I learned so much about myself. But what so many people don't talk about, and it's what you're talking about, is the trauma and the anxiety and the depression and all of those other spiritual elements that come with traveling. Yeah. Um, so I'm curious, did you have, you know, like my experience in Japan, have you had an experience like that where you came back from it very overwhelmed, even depressed? Is yeah. that something that has happened I, to you? Yeah, a few times. Um, me, like you wanting to go to Japan, my dream was Switzerland. So mm-hmm. I always, I fell in love with it when I was there when I was 18. Um, and then it was a dream of mine to move and live there. And then when I finally did that, um, it was not what I expected. Granted, it was six years later, so I was older. I wasn't 18 anymore. Um, mm. It was just very difficult to do that by yourself because I literally packed a bag, one-way ticket, and just bounced. So to figure, and I had no job, no place to live. Like I had to figure it out from scratch. Like thinking of that now, I'm like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> I'm like, oh my God. But I just went on pure like faith and I was, and it worked out, but it was very, it was, it was traumatic for me to be there. Cause it was yeah. just not, it was not the same. Like I, like I thought it was when I went there, like you almost had, I almost had high, too high expectations. Yeah. yeah. 
a and mean culture act. shock is a very yeah. real, very real yeah. thing. Yeah. 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 And it was hard for the language and, you know, I wasn't being treated nicely there because I was American and like, mm-hmm. they just, they have, you know, biases and judgment is everywhere. Everybody has it. And unfortunately mm-hmm. we don't have a good reputation when we travel. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I was getting, you know, treated a little not so nice because of that and it was just it just made it more difficult because I was like I don't have my family here I don't have my friends here it's hard it wasn't like it was hard to integrate into the culture and like meet people and like so it just made it really shitty yeah Yeah, especially I would imagine especially you know when you're trying to be there in a more permanent way rather than just you know on a vacation go have an experience and go home that that would just really uh you know increase multiply that that feeling of of isolation I suppose yeah would would be how long did you live there um I wanted to live there like long term long term but it didn't last very long it lasted like three or four months um just was not it just wasn't good I was actually you know it was it's a weird thing because you're there and it's like I'm like this is my dream like I I've been saying this for six years and like I'm living in the most beautiful place and I was depressed like yeah. I was like this sucks I was anxious I was not sleeping good because that was being overworked and like underpaid and it was like then I got sick out there and I had like a cough that wouldn't stop for three months or two wow. I think wow. yeah. so uh, that on top of like working so much and then not sleeping because I was sick I was like so burnt I was like I can't do this like I yeah. can't and so I left and then went to Italy and then had a got attacked in Italy and then I was like oh my fucking god I was like all right you know what <laughs> like, how okay so you got attacked in Italy how is it you've ever traveled since then? right I know <laughs> yeah it was wow. it was very traumatic I'll tell you and I think there's still parts of me that hasn't fully emotionally dealt with it but um I don't allow I I was so angry about it for so long and there's still parts of me that is but I refuse to allow that to stop me Sure. Good for you. Um, sure. yeah. And you know what? I'm very grateful that it wasn't a lot worse. And yeah. I'm glad I got out safe to some degree. And I was, I'm glad because I had met two other girls um, from couch surfing and we were traveling together and I'm glad they were with me. I wasn't by myself, you know, mm. so, you know, shit happens on tra- when you're traveling. Yeah. yeah. There's, there's, yeah. T- there seems to be two sides that you you see either you know glorified in in the yeah. news or the media or even in movies yeah. where it's like yeah. rainbows and sunshine and butterflies and unicorns yeah. and it's so amazing <laughs> and trumpets play or it's like taken and yeah. you're being Everything you know sold and... into mm-hmm. slavery uh-huh. so you know it's nice to hear a, like a more realistic spectrum Definitely. of you yeah. know it's not perfect and it's not taken <laughs> so, right well yeah. yeah I mean that's what I didn't like about travel bloggers in the community because there's so many of them that have like ball gowns in the middle of the town i'm like give me a fucking break who's carrying like (laughs) ball gowns and like taking pictures in like the hills of italy i'm like come on but you know i mean to to each their own i don't know but to me i'm like i want to see the ruggedness i want to see that you are sleep deprived you're trying to figure out how to get on a train in italy speak the language like yeah i want to see that because that's honestly real ass shit (laughs) <laughs> I uh, I was planning a trip to Italy for this last September, and then of course you know pandemic, and then that yeah. didn't happen. Um, and of course Italy was a hot spot there for the longest time, so Ugh. it really wasn't safe to go. But that was kind of what I was initially planning to do was to go and stay in two places that, while have some commercial and touristy value, I really wanted to experience more of like what do the locals do, yeah, the and real culture of the, the real place. culture, you know, because mm-hmm. that's where my family's from originally, you know, yeah, several me too. generations ago. So. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I you know, but then I also had, you know, very realistic expectations too. Like this is going to be hard. I was going to go by myself. So it was a solo trip just to, you know, something to do. And um you know, I knew it was going to be difficult. I had been learning the language, so that wasn't going to be quite the barrier that it could have mm-hmm. been. But at the same time, you know, when you're not fluent and, you know, things are going super fast, you know, then you get that stress of what's going to happen. I don't know if I can do this quick enough and, you know, all the things. But I, you know, I feel like sometimes we do need to challenge ourselves outside of those little comfort zones that we have. Mm-hmm. Experience the world at large, you know, for good or for bad. Yeah. Because, you know, when you leave your hometown and you go other places, I feel like that just expands your 
knowledge, your compassion, your, you know, right. just view of the world in general. You know, you're really saying make that, you appreciate home. Yeah, you're saying you know? that Americans aren't treated very well abroad and for good reason to some extent because the way they <laughs> you know? act when yeah. they travel. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so. I've, I've, I've even, like, yelled at other <laughs> American travelers because I was like, this is why we get – talk shit about like this is why people don't think of us like in a high way do you know what yeah. I mean like right right I'm like stop acting like that but you're the stereotypical <laughs> what they're saying when they say yes. yeah. Americans yes. are traveling. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. you're the reason there's a stereotype yeah yeah, yeah. So <laughs> it, it's very validating um I have not gotten the chance to read spiritual nomad yet so I apologize if I'm asking things no, that are okay. covered in that book um but you know, like like I said, I went to Japan. I was conversational, so I there was not mm -hmm. a, a huge language barrier for me. Um, but I actually experienced homesickness mm -hmm. really badly. Uh, I mean, yeah. I think, I, I, and I also got really sick while I was in Tokyo. And I just remember one night, like, getting back to the hotel with my two friends, who are five and nine years older than me, respectively. And like just sitting on the bathroom floor with my head over the toilet crying for my mom and dad mm -hmm. <laughs> because mm -hmm. it, it it's people like I, I got back from Japan you know back to America feeling like I had failed yeah like because I actually had a lot of community support like my whole town came together to like raise money for me to go wow um and so when I got back and I was so severely depressed and it was not how I thought it would be at all because I was you know 17 going on 18 and thought mm. the world is a great mm. place mm. it's all <laughs> sunshine and rainbows you know <laughs> I felt like I had done it wrong I mm -hmm. felt like I had failed in some way, even though everybody was like so excited that I had gotten to do it and it didn't matter how it went, but I did it. And yeah. so I, you know, is that something that you write about the, the guilt of not yes. having a good trip? Yes. Um, there's quite a few s chapters in spiritual nomad where I talk about that. Um, going back to pick that book up. Yeah. Going <laughs> to Switzerland the second time I, and coming home, I still feel it. And it's been since and I came home in 2014 and I yeah. still feel like I failed, you know, yeah. cause like my whole goal was to move to Europe and stay there and like travel and try to like travel long-term. And it was just like, sh it just didn't work. Yeah. And maybe there was a part of me that didn't give it enough energy to stay. I didn't. And then, you know, like I found like a group after I came home and I was like, fuck, like if I had that group on Facebook, like when I was out there, I probably would have stayed because there would have been somebody who was nearby who was yeah. like probably like American or somebody or like whatever. And I could have like made a friend or something and maybe would have stuck it out. Um, it sounds yeah. like you were super isolated while you were there to, this, yeah. to an extent. Yeah, I was in the and mountains. If, if you, if you so. hadn't been so, uh, quote, quote, alone. I mean, some people yeah. enjoy that. You know, hey, I want to yeah. go and be in solitude. But yeah. when, you, when you're in an, a foreign country and you've had all these changes all at once, and you don't really speak the language and, you know, there's a culture difference. And then and you're you don't ill. Have, yeah, and then you're ill on yeah. top of that. <laughs> I know. You know, Being, you don't, and, yeah. and you don't have a community of support. I imagine had yeah. you had a few friends that you could socialize with on a regular basis, that yeah. might have made all the difference, you know? I mean, I had, so the thing is, like, I went there when I was 18 and I got, and I stayed in this one hostel for, like, 20 days because me and my cousin, we couldn't leave. We just loved it so much. So I got very <laughs> close with the people who worked there, who I'm mm -hmm. still close with today. So, like, when I went there six years later to, like, work there, like, I knew the people, but, like, obviously six years has gone by, but, like, it was just different. Like, yeah. I... You know, I did meet some people, but I, it was, it seemed, I don't know if this was true or if this was me over analyzing it, but I felt like sometimes things were like the girls were a little bit clicky mm. and it was hard to integrate into yeah. it. I mean, yeah. they weren't all Swiss. They were from everywhere, but it, they've all known each other for years. And then, you know, so it was just a little difficult. Like I had some people who cared and like, but it just wasn't, it wasn't enough. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. Right. We, we've talked a lot, uh, you know, for a few minutes about how difficult it was and how depressing it can be and mm -hmm. such. So I'd like to flip the script <laughs> yeah. and ask yeah. you, you know, what have been like the best trips that you've been on that you've returned, you know, even more invigorated and excited from? I mean, I'm sure it can't. Obviously, we all know it can't all yeah. be sad and overwhelming all the time. Yeah. Um, yeah, I've had plenty of good ones. I mean, you know. 
there's always a balance and I think sometimes you have a bad few days but I think like my first backpacking trip with my cousin when we went for two months Mm -hmm. was probably the most amazing experience I ever had I think it like I blossomed I mean we were really roughing it and like you know that was 2008 so like smartphones weren't a thing wow yeah yeah so (laughs) we had I mean, we had internet, obviously, but, like, not, I wasn't carrying, like, a laptop or anything, so, like, we were old school, like, we had guides, paper maps, maps, (laughs) and, like, and and guidebooks, and, you know, really not, like, having any type of, like, help at all, like, there's, uh, there's this one moment where we were, forget where were we trying to go, but we wound up in, um, we were in Germany and we were trying to figure out to go to our next spot and my cousin's like let's get on this train like I think this is it and I was like no I was like that train says Paris I'm like we're not going there but like we almost like got on the wrong train I was like no dude but like we were there's this one photo I have to maybe find it but there's this one photo where my cousin looks like complete deer in headlights and we were both just sitting there like we had no idea what to do like nobody spoke English we were just like we we're so tired and so hungry and we were just like I don't know what to do <laughs> I love it how did you plan a trip like that um I actually um uh, so I so well, this is what I do so I do a rough plan but obviously don't stick to the plan is my <laughs> motto yeah yeah <laughs> so because I like to have an overall idea because then I feel like when you go there and you have no plan it leads to like overwhelm and anxiety because then you have no idea, no direction. Right. But um, I Google things a lot. I read, I was, I read travel blogs. I look up, but I'm looking up places that are like hole in the walls type places. I'm right. looking up things that off the deep, off the beaten path type thing. Um, I will do some touristy things because if it's just like, a, like a national park or something or something like that. But um, I just, I kind of do things that are an interest to me and like I haven't convinced my husband yet to like stay in hostels with me yet <laughs> but sure. he's, he's not a fan but um <laughs> those are great places to meet people and to meet and to do like things that you didn't think you could I absolutely do. agree I agree they're the best I've met so many great people in hostels who I'm still friends with today same yeah. absolutely yeah. And yeah. it's a, it's a for, great affordable economic option for yeah. people staying places because it's not nearly as expensive, you know, as like a, you know, a, yeah. a, a fancy hotel or even a, a mid-level hotel. Well, and I feel yeah. like I, I've never stayed in a hostel, but I feel like from our conversation and other conversations I've had with people in the past who have, it, it's, you know, when you're somewhere alone, it's kind of someplace you can find a, you know, a community, a sense of community, yeah. mm-hmm. you know, like, like you said, and, and sometimes when you're traveling and you're feeling that anxiety and you're overwhelmed and, and everything, that's probably a good thing to find. So yeah. 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 Other people who are traveling kind of like you and, yeah. and you have kind of this commonality in that you're right. drifting around <laughs> and, you know, you happen to bump into each other in this mm-hmm. very interesting place. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So, yeah, they're adds it's to worth the experience. Doing. Yeah. yeah, and they're very they're great to be in. Like like how you were saying before, like some people it's either taken or <laughs> sunshine yeah. and rainbows. <laughs> I I've gotten it so many times where like, well I've seen the movie Hostel. I'm like oh my god. I'm like it's there's that's not a thing. Like yeah. I mean <laughs> yeah I've been in very amazing like really good hostels. I mean I've stayed in some that were a little sketch, but like nothing <laughs> nothing where I felt like super unsafe. Yeah. yeah. My mother, my mother-in-law and sister-in-law were traveling in Germany and they stayed at one and they ended up renting out a whole floor so that oh, they could cool. have privacy, oh, you know, cool. and it was still cheaper to do that than to yeah. go stay in a hotel. Wow. Mm-hmm. And yeah. um, I think they just wanted it just because my, my, my mother-in-law's older and she wanted more privacy and didn't want to mm-hmm. have to share with like 14 other people. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah, I mean, they, they were like, yeah, it was great. It wasn't, it wasn't this you know, I think a lot, like I was saying before, you know, social media or media or movies tend to, you know, cater to either extreme when it comes right, to traveling. Right. There's no middle ground. And I, you know, knowing lots of people in the industry know that that's just not the reality. Yeah. There's yeah. this big C in the middle of experiences that people can have and they vary. Yeah. And that's, and that's what I've always done when I first started and I still do it. I'm very, I want to show both sides. 
I want to show that sometimes you have amazing days and I don't even like, I don't even say, like, I don't even like the word glamorizing it because it's not always glamorous. It sucks mm -hmm. sometimes, but yeah. there are good times, but I, I don't, I wouldn't describe it as glamorized, you know? Mm -hmm. So during this last year, you know, with a global pandemic and that really restricted travel internationally, did mm -hmm. you guys do any kind of road tripping here in the States or have you done yeah. any traveling this, this last year? Um, this, yeah, usually we would have gone somewhere for sure. Um, I actually got married in the beginning of this. Oh, wow. Pandemic. Congratulations. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. Yeah. So that was insane like right in March when this was all popping off so oh, yeah. um so I didn't really have like a honeymoon um which sucks but well where we'll would you have gone we want to do I want to do Europe uh, I haven't been there in so long and I want to like show my husband where I used to live in Switzerland and like show him because he's like he's like you talk about it so much that it's so beautiful I'm like it's the most beautiful place in the world every picture yeah. I ever see on Instagram or, or <laughs> anybody who does TikTok videos about travel I'm just Anytime the Switzerland ones come across, yeah. it's just the most, it really looks like a fairy tale place. It does look yeah. real. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it looks like a postcard. Like yeah. right, everywhere right. you it look. It looks fake. It looks like it can't possibly exist in <laughs> it's reality. It's gorgeous. Yeah, it's yeah. beautiful. That's awesome. But um, yeah, so we we did some road trips. I mean, I mean, we couldn't do, usually we, we, we have in the past, but like the only place we went to this year was Saratoga Springs up in, upstate a little bit. Mm -hmm. York. Um, that's it. Because yeah. we were just like, we need to get the fuck out of here. Yeah. <laughs> so I, like, I understand. A, a friends of mine who like, we call it like a little quarantine family who like we just consistently like hang out with. And I'm like, you know, um, and you know, we were just like, let's just get like a house that has a pool or something. Yeah. yeah. And just yeah. hang out. It was like the best, like we all needed it. It was just so nice. Yeah. yeah. I, so what has 2020 looked like for you then? Because I know that in April you did that tea with Gary V. It was great, by the way. Yeah, Love you. that interview. Um, <laughs> love Gary V. Ben, I think that you've spoken with Ben, my father, uh, a couple mm. times before. And mm -hmm. uh, he had joked that you and me and Omar and uh, Damon, we should all like do like a, a podcast where we talk about our experiences with Gary Vee. Oh, yeah, that would be cool. That's beside the point, though. Um, you know, what What has 2020 held for you? You know, you've been producing a lot of content. Mm -hmm. But what would you say you, you know, are, are you just doing this, you know, because it's your passion? What, what What is your career, would you say, right now, besides writing? Or is writing um, your main thing? Well, I mean, technically, this is my career, but I technically not. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, I did lose my job back in March from COVID. Um, I'm sorry so to hear that. Yeah, so it's been tough, but you know, um, this is just, I just feel like I'm being given kind of like another shot to try this again to like really, you know, because I think I've had opportunities in the past and I've like gotten and fear has creeped up and I would go back to like a comfortable job where like I went back to mental health when I probably shouldn't have and then you know, but I just feel like I have to like really like dig my feet in and really just like be committed, even though there is fear there. Cause obviously this is not like full transparency. This is not paying the bills. Yeah. But I mean, I wish it would. And if it yeah. does, then this is, I'll be happier than anybody. Like I just truly enjoy doing this. I love connecting with people. It reminds me of traveling. Like when you, yeah. you just meet strangers and you're hanging out and you're learning and then you know, you realize like, and you're a traveler, so you've experienced it. Like you realize how similar people are. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, yeah. You can, you're just so similar. You're just dealing with the same stuff. I mean, the only difference is just culture and language, mm -hmm. you know? So, I mean, I hope that this becomes something I, I feel it in my gut that it will. I like I that. Too. I think that you're the, the fact that you're combining the travel aspect with sort of like the mental health aspect is yeah, a really yeah. good combination and a, a, a really great direction to go in when so many travel bloggers really focus on the economics of it. Mm -hmm. There's so many resources for that. But what yeah. about you know what right. Megan experienced in Japan, the homesickness, right. the depression when yeah. she came back? Let's yeah. talk about those things yeah. because yeah. people and don't it's... expect to come back from a trip and then just be utterly crushed. Right. You know, under the weight of what they experienced or yeah. what have you. So I yeah, think like, that that's a great direction to go in. Yeah, thank you. I mean, I had actually, like, I 
um, one of my other favorite trips was Costa Rica. I did like a two week um, road trip through there or backpacking, wow. I guess. Yeah. Um, and that one, I came home super overwhelmed. Like I was like super anxious, super depressed too. But granted, like I think most of it was because I, um, I was like in the jungle for like two weeks. So I was <laughs> really like, I was really like disconnected. So when I came back to the airport, it was so like stimulation overload, and I was like, oh my yeah. god, like take me back to the jungle. Like I'm, not, I can't. Yeah. Plus it was it was just absolutely gorgeous there too. And I was I was, like, oh. I was supposed to go to Costa Rica this past April. Yep. And mm-hmm. obviously did not get to go. And I was so bummed because I was really mm-hmm. looking forward. I'd never been to Central America before and I was like, Wow, this is gonna be so cool. And going to the jungle like sounds so yeah. amazing. It's it's beautiful <laughs> and the food's amazing and like the people are so nice. I liked it a lot there. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I, I love those kinds of I – w- I had to go to uh, Cabo for a destination wedding that was supposed mm-hmm. to have happened, like, in May, and it got pushed to July. And, you know, so that was the only irresponsible thing I've done all of 2020. <laughs> um, but she did it responsibly. I, I, yeah, <laughs> I did it. I, I quarantined before I went, quarantine when I got home, yeah. you know, all yeah. the things that you're, you're supposed to do. Um, and – I, that had really been the first time in several, several years I'd traveled internationally. And I say internationally, it's just Mexico. Um, <laughs> but, you know, what you were saying before, everywhere is basically the same. You know, you get the, the language barriers and the cultural differences, yeah, sure, yeah. for sure. But, like, I was talking to a lot of the people at the resort, the workers, and they were just so happy to have people mm-hmm. because they had been out of work for, like, two or three months. Yeah, and yeah. And that's how they, you know, they rely on tourism so heavily there in order to make their money. And so I was talking to these little guys that drive the little golf carts and drive you around yeah. to the different places and, and getting to hear, you know, they were just trying to feed their families, you yeah, know? Yeah. And it's like literally yeah. that's the same problem everywhere you go. Right? People are people. No and it makes where you feel you so connected yeah. to these people, who, even though they don't really understand your language, you don't really understand mm-hmm. theirs very well. And, and you have some cultural differences, but it was that unifying hey, we're trying to, to take care of our families and yeah. we want to work and we're so glad you're mm-hmm. here and thank you for coming, <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. all these things. Yeah. So I, you know, and I, I enjoyed that trip in the sense that it was um, it was nice to get away and have different scenery and just kind of kind of take it down a notch from the stress and anxiety of what had been going on in the world. And, you know, in Mexico, you can really do that because they really promote that whole, hey, just chill out, here's a margarita, yeah. you yeah. know, vibe. <laughs> and I really, I really definitely, you know, hooked onto that because I was just like, I need that after these last few months have been so challenging. And, uh, you know, I came back from that trip feeling pretty good. And that's yeah. not always the case. Sometimes I've come yeah. back from trips and I'm just like, well, I wish I could have lasted another week or two. Oh, or, yeah. I, or, oh, I'm so yeah. glad to be home. That was all so stressful, <laughs> you know? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So, um, yeah, I think that the approaching travel in that way and also how your mental health can play into these things, you know, because I know I've had friends who that's their job. That's what they do. And so their expectations are pretty realistic. But then you have people like me who only travel like that, you know, every few years. Mm-hmm. You build up this sort of fantasy in your mind. Yeah. Well, it's going to be yeah. like this when I go, and it's going to be just like I saw in the movies. Mm-hmm. And that's not really true. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, yeah. not always. And yeah. so I think that it's nice to hear that other more realistic side of traveling. Well, and even if it's not a huge, I mean, just last weekend, I, I went to Shreveport. I went two and a half hours away. No. I got to stay in a tree house for a weekend, oh, cool. and it was like, the coolest thing ever, yeah. you know, total, total bucket list, you know, moment. And then, you know, I got home and it was snowing in Texas, which is like, <laughs> we had a blizzard. Crazy. We had like a literal blizzard. I there heard, was like four I inches heard. of snow on the ground, which never happens. And I got to have a snow day with my kids and it was all wonderful and beautiful and magical. And then Monday rolled around and it was like, oh man, life is still going to go on. Like, you know, yeah. even just little trips like that, there's, there's a, like, it was beautiful. It was great. I felt so refreshed and renewed, but then when the, the like, you know, life came back into mm-hmm. you still got to go do the do the thing and you got to work and you got to bathe the kids and you got, mm-hmm. you know, you gotta, it sounds like it, it just it, it hits you, you know, and it and it did it, it for, you know, I don't want to sound like I didn't appreciate the wonderful time that we had. But at the same time, I'm like, 
Was it only a week ago? It feels like years it ago. Sounds I mean, like you know. we all need to buy uh, Laura's book. Yes. <laughs> Especially as we come out of the pandemic. I think, you know, I regret not being able to read it before the podcast. But yeah, I think that we all, we could all benefit from a copy because I'm sure that she talks all about this kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah I have all this. Yeah, because I've yeah. been there. I've been there yeah. so many times. There is definitely a mental health aspect of it that you don't. Well, hear about you know traditionally and, you know, i've been and, trying to go to italy for three years now and something has always happened yeah in some big catastrophic way that's kept me from going and you know i'm i'm, I'm kind of having to go okay what is what what does that mean you know what, there wasn't the right time and so it's it's i've got to wait you know and here here i'm having to deal with right now personally i had all these plans for the you know the next little bit where Hey, in February, I haven't seen some friends in over a year. I want to go to Austin, which is just a few yeah. hours from here, and go yeah, visit my him. Yeah, da- my, my dad lives in Austin. Oh, I haven't okay. seen him. Yeah, I haven't That's seen awesome. him in like over a year either. Yeah. Oh, now I'm not going to get to do that because I just had this thing with my eye, and I'm not allowed to mm. drive. And mm. so it's like all these different things when you plan, and then they don't happen. And so then you have to deal with the mental like repercussions of that, you know, kind of. Yeah. You plan these trips or you plan these times away or you mentally go, okay, I can do this, you know, and it's it's a, it's a little safer now and the vaccine's coming out and so maybe, you know, if I still socially distance and wear the mask and the sanitizer and all the things, it'll be okay. And then something <laughs> completely unrelated, <laughs> you know, comes in and swoops and is like, nah, you're not doing that. Uh, well, you know. just think of it this way. When you finally do get to go to Italy, you will have had so much time to plan it out that it'll be perfect trip. <laughs> you know, you would think that, like, that I've had so, to like mentally like pull back every time it's happened happen like okay I'm just gonna put that to the side for now yeah. because if I sit yeah. and think about it too much I'm gonna get really upset yeah. that it didn't yeah. happen so <laughs> I really haven't had that much time to plan that's why I was just kind of like okay let's do, we're gonna do it in September and I was about to buy a ticket when they were like yeah we're shutting we're shutting everything down shut the airport <laughs> <We're shutting everything laughs> so like, okay I want to get back to Laura yeah sorry <laughs> my goodness <laughs> y'all could talk forever have your own podcast <laughs> um so uh, for the last portion of the podcast because I know that we're we're getting closer to you know our the end of our time with you can we talk about your new book Penny mm-hmm. Panic yes mm-hmm. yes let's do that mm-hmm. yes please what was what was what was your motivation and what was that process like so um i have a stepdaughter and she was struggling with anxiety and panic attacks um and i was hearing stories about from her and then her her friends and then you know i wanted to do something and then i just started like just roughly just googling things what's out there currently for kids and i even bought some of the books that are out there and i actually really didn't like them um i just Full disclosure, I just thought that they were incredibly negative. Um, like mm. sometimes they would say like a lot of books were like, there's a monster living inside of me. And um, and I was just like, that's so horrible to say to a kid. So they're, yeah. they're yeah, making so it I'm sound like, you're like... See, so I'm like, you're seeing this as a negative thing. And it's, and I just didn't like that message. And then I've seen, I read something that was for even younger kids and like the characters that were in that, like the animal that was in there like looks so depressed and I was like I can't even read this book I was like first of all I would never introduce this to like a five-year-old I wouldn't I I mean I know some young kids are like more anxious than others but like I don't even know if I would introduce the word anxiety to a young kid like that yeah not yet you know right Mm -hmm. like it just might be kid stuff you know so I was like no there's nothing really out there or the stuff that I did find out there that it was too clinical Mm. and I was like this is boring yeah. Like I understand it. Cause like I have a psychology background. So like, I, I understand it, but a teen yeah. is not going to understand that or they are not going to care. It's not going to keep so their attention like, well, long enough. Yeah. No. So I was like, I want to write something that's for them. That is stories that they can un- like be like, Oh, you know what? I just went through that last week. Or like, I know a friend who went through that. And like, you know, I grew up in Edison, New Jersey and like, you know, I don't know. I, I knew crazy shit in middle school. Like, yeah, people, yeah. like, you know, I knew a lot of friends in that town that died from drugs, like wow. in middle school and high school, a lot wow. of people killed themselves. Like it was a lot. So I knew of a lot at a very young age. Cause like, I was like, damn, that person died. Like what the fuck? Yeah. So, so there's some aspects that I just feel like, you know, 
sometimes kids like I feel like because there is a story in there that's you know uh, talks about that kind of stuff but I don't go too deep into it but yeah um I feel like you kept it you kept it very interesting but you also kept it pretty vague but yeah. while being realistic like it wasn't mm-hmm. like you were it's not like it was 13 reasons why you see the girl right. in the bathtub right. like right it, it's it's alluded to right and it's kind of obvious but it's not like you're describing like awful Detail. awful not scenes. a how-to yes. on how right. to right. you do right. something which is yeah. you should never do I, that yeah because i do want to speak about that because like i personally went through that as a kid and i know i know for a fact that like kids these days hear crazy shit that obviously they're not going to tell yeah. their parents like right. oh my my friend is doing this or my friend died you know it's you just don't whatever but I feel like um, teenagers live in the most challenging time right now because of social media and the yeah. internet. I yeah. can't even mm-hmm. imagine growing up as a teenager in this time where you can be bullied worldwide for something right. and, and that and the way that that affects your mental health. Like I just yeah. I don't I do not envy kids today and I, I really feel yeah. sorry for the fact that that's the world they kind of have to live in where this is such yeah. a widespread you know, per, you know, permeating thing in our culture. But and it does, so it does make me very appreciative of people like you, yeah, Laura, who who are uh, willing to talk about it and put content out there to help people deal with it. Because yeah. you know, as someone with young children who are going mm-hmm. to have to grow up, yeah, in in a society like this, and you know, I I struggled with some anxiety and depression as as you know a teenager, and and I it wasn't fun then, Mm-mm. but I didn't mm-hmm. have to deal with half of what no. you know kids these days have to deal with. So so thank you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, these are hard things that we, we, you know, they're hard to talk about. And we have this stigma in our culture to not really talk about mental health as much. And I feel like yeah. anytime we start a conversation where yeah. that's, that's a thing that we put out there, I think it destigmatizes it just a little bit I'm more. I'm so glad that that stigma is, is, yeah. I, I, it's slowly but surely going away. But, yeah. I, I, you know, I'm, I'm very glad to see that. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, with the, with the book I just really wanted to like have something out there for them that you yeah. know they can resonate with I speak of like you know um Penny has a panic attack in class and somebody captures mm-hmm. it on Snapchat and it goes around the whole school you yeah. know yeah. and I feel like that's very real I feel like that happens and yeah. um you know I want them to so I integrated some clinical some clinical aspects in it and this is also just from not just from you know, I mean, I'm not a therapist, but like I worked in mental health, but I also went to therapy for many years. I still do. So it's just all the years of that. And I background. Yeah. Yeah. And just the skills. So I've implemented the coping skills that you would learn in a therapeutic setting in the story so that you're still, you're hearing the story that you can resonate with. And then you're getting like little snippets of like how you can deal with it. And I loved that. Yeah. And they're all like, things you can do at home or things right. you can do at school. Like, um, that's Medi- kind of how I want to do it, that you can do it anywhere. Right. Yeah. right. No, I, I really loved that aspect of all the tips that you gave and in, in presenting it in a very organic way. I really loved that. Thank yeah. you. Do you plan on writing uh, other books for like smaller children? You mentioned, you know, not liking what was already out there and this is for kind of middle school, high school. Do you, do you plan on writing more in, in the same vein? Um, I'm not, I would have to really think about that one for younger kids. Cause I don't know how I would, I would like have to actually talk to a therapist about it, yeah. like to think yeah. of like, how do you, how do you do that? Like in an ethical way. Um, but I do plan on Penny. Well, I'm going to write another Penny panic book. Oh, good. Uh, I was going to ask, another, is there going to be a yeah. sequel? Yeah. Good. Yeah. Cause I, I I'm going to do Penny going through this pandemic. Oh, is perfect. Ah. So, that's that's going to be excellent. Yeah, that's yeah. brilliant. I think, so, I think kids have been an overlooked aspect yeah. in this whole thing. Yeah, their absolutely. Mental health during all this. We're so struggling. Been, <laughs> yeah, so I mean, I've been keeping notes through this time. I've been, like, paying attention, asking questions, and, like, talking to family and friends who have kids and just, just you know, just observing how it is. I mean, it's going to be a little difficult. I think once things calm down a little bit and we can kind of like take a breath and then look back, it'll be easier for me to write. But like, sometimes it's hard when you're, we're still in the midst of it. But that yeah. that is the plan. I do plan on writing one for Good. this time. Yeah. Excellent. And you published through Amazon? Mm-hmm. How, mm-hmm. how, what was that process like? Is that, is that relatively difficult or? Um, question. not necessarily. I mean, like I, so they allow you to do it for free. Obviously, you got to do all the legwork. Um, 
I had to hire my own graphic artist and um, my uh, editor. Um, but I would say like the formatting of the book is probably the worst part, like getting the margins correct. So that's why like recently I got like my new orders in and I saw that and they messed it up. Oh, I was so pissed <laughs> off. I was like, oh my God, I was waiting weeks for that. Uh... And like, like, like I show my husband, he's like, well, what's the issue? I'm like, are you joking? I was like, you don't see that gap. Mm -hmm. But he's like, I would have never noticed that if you didn't pick, if you didn't point it out. Yeah. But being that I've literally like constructed it from like, I, it's just, I'm such a detail person. So like, I was like, that looks horrible. And I was like, these are <laughs> oh, need no. to be thrown out. And then I'm just <laughs> glad that like, everybody was like, are you out of your mind? Sell them anyway. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I'm, yeah. And I'm so appreciative that people are like, still want them. And like, obviously the writing is still the same, but. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it was it was it was fascinating to learn. I've been following you for quite a while now, um, and and purchased your book a long time ago. Penny Panic, mm -hmm. Dad Ben, he put me mm -hmm. onto that, mm -hmm. um, and it was just it was interesting because it, you've just kind of done everything yourself from the ground up. Like you're you're a very self starting person. I think yes. mm -hmm. <laughs> even with your anxiety and and such, like you just seem like such a strong and passionate person. It just comes Thank through you. in everything that you do. Yeah, definitely. Most people can use their anxiety, you know, as a, as an excuse, excuse for weakness or not weakness. That's a bad way to say that. I'm sorry. That's not what I mean. Is a is an excuse for sitting out sitting. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Sitting yeah. out is a better way to put sitting that. Out. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and not, you know, overanalyzing too much whereas you mm -hmm. know and then there are people like yourself who take mm -hmm. that and go okay well then what can I they use it to motivate them yeah. you know mm -hmm. and I feel like there's no right or wrong way but I feel like when you look at it more in that aspect of okay yeah I have this issue but what can I do to maximize it in mm -hmm. the best way possible for my life yeah. you know mm -hmm. and this is going to be this is my life this is going to be something I'm going to have to do to live with yeah let's do what we can to figure out how to deal with it, make the best of it, and live a, a fulfilling, successful life with it instead, yeah. or in spite of it, or yeah. I don't know, in spite of it doesn't sound right because it's not like something's wrong with you that yeah, well, yeah. Implies I that. Mean, and there's nothing yeah. wrong. Yeah, there's nothing yeah, wrong with, there's, with Like I've been years when it was really bad, I was always told, and you know, there's there's good and there's bad therapists out there. And yes. you know, I was always, <laughs> the ones that I kind of had were kind of telling me like there's something wrong. Yeah. It sounds and like that's it, what you were picking up from the other books that you were, yeah. that, that it was. Yeah. So I don't, was wrong. yeah. And I even had, like, I was on medication at the time when I was in my early twenties and I've had psychologists tell me like, you have a disorder, blah, blah, blah. Like, which you will never hear me say I have anxiety yeah. or I have an anxiety disorder. I will never say that word. I, because I just don't like it makes you feel like you're a victim or you have something wrong with you yeah. and I don't think I have anything wrong with me I think I have like the anxiety that I I, I experience from time to time I think is very normal I think sometimes yeah, it's absolutely I think it's, yeah I think it's heightened in certain situations if I'm stressed sure. out but right. I, you, I think it's a gift honestly yeah, yeah. and I think a lot of people who have it, I think are underlying are usually very creative people. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. And if you're a creative, you probably suffer from depression or anxiety or something along those lines. And I think it's just the overall confidence thing. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. if you just, if you learn to have the confidence in yourself, it's not going to overtake you to, to such a, it's yeah. not going to have such a tight grip, you know? Right. Yeah. Right. What do uh, any future traveling, what does that look like for you? Um, well, is it too hard to think about I mean, that right now <laughs> I mean no I mean I'm always fantasizing so I mean I really I've I want to I've actually been, lately been really wanting to go to Puerto Rico really bad mm. um my husband's Puerto Rican so I, I really want to go there um but yeah I want to go back to Europe I miss it yeah. so much like I need a house there yeah <laughs> right sure. I just love it I love their whole just love their outlook on life and their the, just the overall European culture. I love it. Yeah. 
So deal. what does the future hold for you in in general? Like as you work on making content and building these connections and such, like what can we expect from you in 2021? Do you have any plans or is this the year of no plans? Because <laughs> we, we can see how that proves to be an issue. <laughs> um, no, I mean, I think I think it's good to have some plan and some goal. And I think you have to also on the other side to balance it out allow for shit to happen yeah mm -hmm. um for things to go yeah. awry and you are able to you know maneuver your way around uh because you, you have to have like you have to be able to go with the flow yeah so, i mean i do plan on getting the third um my third book but technically like penny panic 2 mm -hmm. i don't know what i'm gonna call it yet but um i want to get that started penny, yeah penny pandemic any no. pandemic it's <laughs> a good one um but i mean in i i just really want to make this like a thing like i yeah. wish i could yeah. like i wish some crazy thing will just pop off and i'll have that moment where i'm like okay like this is my career we're going full force you know mm -hmm. yeah um maybe get a tiktok if you don't have one already i do yeah. i should follow you on that yeah i love tiktok <laughs> I know I have to like step up my game with TikTok, but you know, it's like Gary said, the video that's such a big thing for you. Yeah, it's yeah. a big thing right now too. Mm -hmm. Just this little it minute makes video. you feel more connected with people. Yeah, it and does. But you know, face. like because I'm like a writer and I like have like so many thoughts, it's hard to get my thoughts into like a thirty second TikTok or try yeah. to be creative in that way. It's very difficult. Yeah. I think I'm struggling with that lately, and I'm like, I it, like. When I see other people being super creative with it, I'm like, that's so much work. Because I know how much work <laughs> just went into that TikTok. I'm like, mm -hmm. I don't have that time to do that shit. Yeah. But like, yeah. it's, but you I'm just still, started. You just yeah, started. I'm, so you, I'm you still got learning. room. Yeah. 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 Do you have any advice that you would give others who, you know, are, are young entrepreneurs like yourself? Like, is there anything that you wish you had been told, you know, 12 years ago when you started your journey? Um, that's a good question yeah to to keep being yourself that's a huge one i think there's a lot of people who have a lot of opinions about certain things um mm -hmm. you know i've been told many times you'll never make it as a writer uh writers don't make money um good luck with it you're not gonna make money type thing like you know like those types of things and i use that as fuel and i'm sure like you've heard gary v say it sometimes you i have a little chip on my shoulder where i'm like i you i'm like in my mind i'm like oh okay i'm gonna remember that because when i do make it i'm gonna send you a copy of it yeah mm -hmm. yeah yeah you know yeah, what i mean absolutely. like absolutely so i have that mentality where I, it's like the jerseyness in me where i'm like oh <laughs> you just challenged me now like yeah. okay. like okay yeah. Yeah. so i mean I think authenticity, like I get asked a lot, like what it is. And I'm like, authenticity, I can't tell you enough how much that is what people want. Yes. It, I don't care what you're talking about. If you're talking about Oreos, I don't care. If you're authentic as fuck, <laughs> people will see it. And that's what people want, yeah. 100%. And I've been authentic about what I've, my whole journey from the day one of my Instagram, if you have the time to scroll through all that, you would see I have not changed. I mean, I've changed, but like my overall message has not changed. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Well, speaking of Instagram, why don't you tell everybody where they can find you on the World Wide Web? Yes. Yeah, so uh, you can find me on Instagram, Twitter, uh, and TikTok, Travel Jersey Girl. It's J E R Z. Um, and I'm on Facebook also, just Traveling Jersey Girl, regular spelling. Um, but yeah, and then my website's travelingjerseygirl.com. If you want my book, I will sign them for you. And that's with either Penny Panic or Spiritual Nomad. And okay. also you can, and also you can get them on Amazon too, if you don't want to have it signed by me <laughs> for any <laughs> reason. <laughs> Good deal. Well, thank you, Laura, for being on with us today and talking about this important topic of mental health yes. and how you yes, integrate it you. into your job. Um, we appreciate you taking the time out of your schedule to do that. Yeah, and thank you so um, yeah, so if you guys ever want to learn about, you know, anxiety and travel and all the things that go up and down with that, you should check Laura's book out on books out on Amazon and her website. And yeah, I think that's going to I think it's going to wrap us up for today. So, uh, guys, thanks so much for joining us. We hope you all enjoyed it, and uh, we'll have to catch you all next time. Bye. Bye.
Bye. Bye. Thank you. Do you have a story to tell? We want to hear it. If you'd like to be a guest on our podcast and share your story, contact us on our website at painpoints.com or any of the social media linked on our website. Be sure to subscribe and follow us on either Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or YouTube. We'd appreciate a review, a like, or a comment to let us know what you think. You can find all of our podcasts linked on our website under the podcast tab. Once again, thanks for joining us, and we want to wish everybody a wonderful day. Bye.